All right, thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about using forecasts. And Jason, I know last time we got together, we talked about metrics and goals. And forecasts, in my mind, are very similar to metrics and goals. So can you explain quickly what's the difference between a forecast and just a generic metric? Yeah, no, of course. So the way I see it, the difference, the key difference between goals and forecasts is forecasts are predictive and then goals are prescriptive. And that closely ties into time orientation. So forecasts are more future orientated with predictions that get set up, whereas goals are current and historical performance data. So Can you that's give the key an difference. example just for the people that haven't seen the last episode? Like what is a good example of a goal that we've seen at customers? So I could explain a scenario for goals. So a, a scenario for goals usually is setting up quarterly sales targets for salespeople based on their past performance and expected market growth uh, to motivate those individual salespeople uh, on current market trends. So that's more goal orientated, whereas forecasts are more for sales managers to predict to predict the next quarter revenue to allocate resources and effectively well reach the forecast or quota. I see. So, yeah. so forecasts are mostly around sales numbers and sales pipeline and are we going to hit our numbers or not? Correct. Yes. And I also see forecasts as being useful for roles that require stronger analytical based decision making, like finance managers or strategic planners, whereas goals are used by sales teams and project managers. Are forecasts only revenue targets or could they be like units as well? Like, Because some people will try to forecast how many units of product X are we going to ship this quarter? <clears throat> so that's a really good question, Pete. We, you, you get different types of forecasts. Today, we're going to focus more on opportunity forecasts that the purpose is more revenue-based so or opportunity-based, but you get revenue forecasting as well. That's more for finance and executive teams to anticipate the revenue, uh, to make informed decisions on investments and expenses and growth strategies and all of that. You also get demand forecasting. So, And I just want to explain the differences between the forecasts as well as demand forecasting is crucial for supply chain management, for inventory control and production on planning to ensure that the businesses can meet the future demand of the product that they are selling, right? So then you get re resource forecasting as well. So that ties in more to your sales team. So it helps the human resources and project management to forecast the number of resources or users that's needed in the future based on uh, the, the demand. And then you get financial forecasting as well. There's a, a lot of forecasting that you could do within Dynamics. That makes a lot of sense. And I know most of our customers are smaller businesses. And so they're probably going to be more focused on opportunity forecasting. So I think you're right. Like, let's just start there. But it's good to know if the viewers are interested in any of those other more involved options and configurations, they can reach out to us. And we can help them walk through those options. Most definitely, yes. Yeah, it's, okay, it's so amazing. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, nothing to be sorry about. I just, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just, I, I'm, I want to know what am I looking at here? Can you just walk <laughs> through this and just kind of explain like what we're looking at and just kind of explain yeah. to the audience kind of what you can do here? No, of course. So this is a forecast that's already been configured. Um, I can show you what a forecast looks like uh, or before it's configured as well. If you want to jump in there, we could, I could show you that. But this is an already configured forecast, so it's based on the opportunity. And then we uploaded a sales quota for each individual user. So you can see Sanjay is the top of the hierarchy. So, and then what this just means is he's the manager for each one of them beneath him. So uh, then for Alan Steiner as well, you can see he's a manager for, I think it's David or somebody. So <clears throat> over there, you can see it's Alan and then David. And so it just shows of, the full cost. Yeah. It's kind of like roll up groups. And like, so Sanjay runs a division with four people himself and three others. And then Alan has uh, someone that reports to him. That's correct. Yes, exactly. So when you set up the full cost, you set up security roles, you set up, well, there's a lot of setup that needs to happen on that. I can show it to you a bit later, but 
Over here, you can see the main thing is you need to upload the quota. So as soon as your forecast has been uploaded and then activated, you then download a sample file. And that sample file is basically the user hierarchy in that sample file. I can quickly show it to you. Well, hold as on, you're Angie. pulling that up, can you describe what do you mean by a sample file? Is it like a spreadsheet? Yeah, it's a spreadsheet. Yeah. And so would I put my data into the spreadsheet and then upload it? Or what would I use that sample file for? Yes. So you put in your quota data in the sample sheet and then you upload it. So basically what you do is you get a username, which would be Sanjay and then Jeremy and Jamie. And then you get the quota in the next column. So yes, it's a Excel uh, template. And then you put in for each user, you put in their quota. And then you upload that back into your forecast. And then that would be your quota for uh, the period of your forecast. So. That's interesting. And that it makes sense because typically in the past, sales managers would put quotas in front of salespeople in spreadsheet format. So they say, here's how much I think you should be selling this month, this quarter. Is it done on time periods or is it just a quota? Like, is it defined on a period of time, like months or years or quarters? So it's just a quota in the template file. But when you set up your forecast, you set up the forecast based on the period. So when you upload the file, it knows that it's part of that forecast and that period. I yeah. see. So in this case, this one that you're showing us is for the month of February. That's correct. Yes. So this is forecasted for February. So the quota yeah. numbers are pretty easy to understand. They're just numbers that a sales manager or the CEO or whoever is assigning to sellers to hit their quota. So let's maybe move on to the next columns, which it looks like possibly are actual deals that are closing. Yes. So you can see the next column is one. And all of this ties back to a field on the opportunity side, which is called forecasted category. And I can quickly show it to you. If I jump into the opportunity screen, and we'll just wait for it to load. You can see I already created a view called forecast open opportunities. I like to use the new deal tracker pipeline way of looking at it. So over here you could see we have the topic of the opportunity. And then to the far right you can see there's a forecasted category drop down. So this is tied to a field on the opportunity. And then whatever your opportunity is in, like best case, committed, omitted, won or lost, that will then update your forecast calculations on the forecast screen. So you can see this one is part of the pipeline. So it's in the pipeline. I have a couple of best cases. So you can see that also updates the probability on the far right hand side. So you can see in the pipeline is about a 65% probability. And that ties back to your predictions as well to predict future forecasts. So to predict the odds of us closing that deal basically Correct. Is, another, is another way of saying it the outcome yes yeah yeah so based on that field that you pick that will tell the system which bucket to put those opportunities into on that other screen that you're showing the forecast screen that is correct yes so if i jump back to the forecast screen you'll now see each one of those options in the category field will match what we have here so you can see best case committed pipeline Close that. This is great. And so what is the column forecast then? Is that how close you are hitting your target, your quota target? Yes. So this is how close it, it's basically rolling up all in one. You can see now it's very similar to the one. So you'll see each one will uh, look the same except this one for Jamie because he has one in committed as well and then one in the pipeline, which ends up adding to 200 and one thousand three hundred and ninety seven dollars where the one is only ninety four thousand so yeah i see so it kind of uses so is it using those probabilities to figure out like the aggregate there the total yes yes it's using this to figure out the aggregate yeah do you set those probabilities like is that a configuration option so we say like likely you know uh, Obviously, best case is best case, but like, do you prescribe a best case scenario is 10% or 20%? Do you do that somewhere in the system? 
yes, you can configure it. It takes a little bit of customization, but yes, you can configure when it's best case, it equals 50% or when it's committed, it's 90%. Yes, you can change that. Yeah. Is that probability just a separate field that just being aut um, automatically changed when you change the, I forget what the name of the field was, the forecast field of the opportunity? The yes. Yeah. It's just a, a whole number field that gets calculated based on that. Yeah. I mean, honestly, this seems really simple to use. Okay, well, before we go on to my more complicated questions, could you explain what is that prediction column? Yeah, so the prediction column, when you click on this, it will give you an AI prediction based on the last couple of years worth of data, as well as future predictions. So unfortunately, it's not showing the data now because I need uh, 40 lost opportunities as well as 40 one opportunities for it to make an accurate prediction in the CRM system. So that's why it doesn't show it. And then also it gives you a small message usually at the bottom that would say, well, the prediction for the next quarter is going to be an upwards trend or it's going to be in a downwards trend. And it can do it based on accounts and you can configure it. It uses the sales insights module for that. So so would someone need to have, do you know which license that requires? Is that sales enterprise or do they need the sales premium to get this? So I believe for the accelerated premium functionality and the opportunity predictive scoring, you need the premium license. Yeah. Okay. And if someone has a question about that, they can obviously reach out to us um, and we can get that addressed for sure before they start their planning process. But this is really cool. And um, I understand why it isn't working right now because we just don't have an update in our sample system. But for customers, that could be really powerful to help sales management and executive teams understand, hey, are we going to hit our targets? And what should the targets be for the coming years? Definitely. Yeah. You could add a drill down by uh, column. So you can see over here, it's just another way to drill down into the data. So if I were to click now on, let's say, Jeremy, it's going to show me the related opportunities that ties to the forecast so they call it underlying records so you can see over here this is in the pipeline phase where these two are grayed out they're not editable because they're already won so that would be part of this one uh, forecasted data and then if i want to drill down and see well this opportunities or the opportunity data that's in the underlying data what accounts does it tie to I can then click on this drill down on the hierarchy. You can see this button over here. And then that will show it in a different way of drilling down, which would then show the accounts, but then also show you the individual best cases scenario. You can see committed pipeline for each account as well. So it's just a different way of drilling into the data. This is really cool. So I'm just gonna summarize from what I saw. You can drill down to the specific opportunities Jeremy's working that make up that forecasted number, or you can look at the customers that make up that number. And some customers might have multiple opportunities, of course, in a given time period. That is correct, yes. Exactly. Yeah, this is really cool. It gives you a lot of insights into what's going on with your sales. I know a lot of our customers are doing all this in spreadsheets or with accounting reports, and it's a nightmare for them. It it's very time consuming and clunky. This is so much easier. Yep. No, definitely. We are actually in the busy with a project for a client now where we are setting up forecasts for them based on product like uh, scoring. So it's uh, a way for us to determine future predictions for products that's being sold. Well, it's products, but it's services. So, yeah. You kind of read my mind because that was going to be my next question. I know a lot of our customers will want to forecast by the sellers, of course, and the customers, but a lot of them will also want to know how is product X doing? You know, we just launched a new product. How is that doing? So yeah. is that out of the box or was that a customization that we built for that customer? So it's part of the out of the box. It's one of the pieces that you can configure and it's called product-based forecasting. So it allows you to then do forecasts based on products. So yeah, it's out of That's the box. It's really just configuring awesome. it. Yeah. And I noticed like up there where it says opportunity forecast, is this like a traditional view? Like, can you configure different views? So 
This is actually the forecast. So you can see over here, I have a test forecast that's an interactive one. So it's not a view per se. It looks similar to the rest of Dynamics where you select a view, but you actually select different forecasts in here. So you can have multiple different forecasts, one being the opportunity forecast and then the other one being a product based forecast. So it still shows the same columns, quota one, uh, depending on what you have in the columns on the edit column side. But yes, so it doesn't so work exactly like a view. Is, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. This screen is a little bit more controlled by Microsoft, but you can choose which columns. And honestly, you know, from decades of doing quotas and helping customers with quota management, these are all the columns that you really care about. And then if you want to know the details, you have those different drill downs that you showed that I could drill down into specific opportunities or into specific customers to see what's going on. So this makes a lot of sense. It's like a very simple view of what is happening in my sales pipeline. This is really cool. Exactly. I don't really have any other questions. Are there any other things that you want to show that the, a sales manager or a salesperson might benefit from? Nothing really. We can maybe touch on dashboards in the future. Uh, we, we set up a couple of forecasted dashboards. I think we'll do a session probably on goals dashboards and then forecast dashboards. That's then touching on the first piece that we've discussed, which was goals. And then the second uh, podcast, which is forecasts. So that's great. Anybody watching this right now, if you want to stay tuned in, hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, please like it and consider sharing it with your network. But I will tell you, this is amazing. This alone would help a lot of small businesses just manage their sales processes because it just makes it all so much easier to both track the quotas and the actuals, but also report on them and roll them up. Because a lot of people are submitting like dozens of spreadsheets every week, every month to keep sales, the sales team like in the loop as far as forecast versus actuals. And it's really a big time sink for a lot of companies. So this is a huge step forward in efficiency. Yep, no, definitely. I completely agree with you, Pete. Cool. Well, really appreciate your time, Jason. As always, you you really showed me a lot here. This is cool. And well, if anybody has any comments or questions or wants to see something more specific in future episodes, leave a comment or ping either one of us out on LinkedIn. Uh, we're happy to incorporate in your questions into a future video. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate it. Thanks, Pete.